welcome back to another video this is bruna today we are going to be creating my halloween costume together so this video is going to be a mixture of tutorial of me trying out something me figuring out how to sew things together for example with leaves that I'm not sure how to do it, but we are going to do everything in today's video. So it's going to be a combination of crochet and sewing in one video. I don't promise you that everything is going to be explained because some things I know more or less, for example, for sewing. For crochet, I am going to teach you how to do the overskirt and the, and the corset. So the corset is already on my channel. So I'll link that in the description is this video right here my previous one and then today i'm going to be showing you how we are going to be attaching and crocheting the over skirt to our corset and then we are going to be doing the under garment for this medieval costume that i'm planning for such a long time i've always wanted to make one and today is the day the inspiration for this particular costume came from vampire diaries i know Catherine. I've seen her wearing a lot of super super cute dresses. I wish I could do one of those dresses that she wore because it was incredible but I want it to be kind of vintage, kind of medieval but at the same time more medieval than vintage I would say. <laughs> I'm going to be putting some ideas here for you guys. The medieval era was from the 5th to the 15th century so a long long time ago <laughs> and I want it to be super simple because that was what they used to wear back then so yeah this is everything that I have so far in mind and I really hope you enjoyed the video it's going to be super different but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have a lot of fun I'm going to probably do a lot of mistakes but that's fine that's part of us trying something new and yeah I really hope you like it and if you enjoyed today's video don't forget to leave your massive thumbs up as you always do and also don't forget to subscribe and to turn on the notification bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video so enjoy and now let's begin with our medieval dress <laughs> so the first thing that you have to do is to go ahead and do your corset I have mine completed because I've made this two days ago I think yeah two days ago and I have also the string that I also show you how to crochet in that video so go ahead if you are making this with me go ahead and create your corset and then come back to this video so that we can learn how to crochet the overskirt. So before you move into crocheting the actual overskirt, we have to decide where we want to crochet the overskirt. So you're not gonna be able to see my face now. So we are going to get the corset and then you're going to be putting it around your, your waist exactly where it's gonna go and then you're gonna get two stitch markers and then you're going to be deciding where you want the overskirt to go so you're going to be choosing a stitch on this side and also on this side so that we can crochet the overskirt going back and forth so I'm going to be doing mine from the fourth row here of double crochets so from this side all the way to the other side also one two three four from the fourth row so I'm still going to be having like an opening here at the front so that you can see the undergarment so you can see I have the two stitch markers so I'm going to be crocheting my overskirt from this point going around all the way to this point so you will see better now that I'm going to show you on the table so now to crochet the overskirt, I'm still going to be using the same yarn. The only thing that is going to be different is that I'm going to be changing to a nine millimeters hook for the rest of the skirt. The beginning, I'm going to be using my six, exactly the same as the one that I've used to crochet the corset. We are just going to be using the stitch marker for this very first row. So you're going to be opening your corset making sure that it's on the right side so the wrong side is where you have the weave in so make a slip knot and you're going to be attaching the yarn where you have this stitch marker so go through this stitch 
and you're going to pull up a loop single crochet so once you've done the single crochet we are going to be stopping right here just for a moment because we are not chaining going up because we are not counting the chain as a stitch so we are going to go straight from here to the first double crochet so what we have to do now is just double crochet from this point all the way to the other stitch marker for my size from this point to this point I have 52 double crochets and I'm doing a size medium so if you are doing a smaller size you're probably gonna have less and if you are doing a larger size you will be having more stitches than I have here what happened to my light <laughs> so all you have to do is to create the first double crochet into this first stitch where you have the single crochet so this one here is going to be the first double crochet if you want you can place a stitch marker here and all you have to do is to find stitches and create the double crochets no secret and I'm going to be doing 52 double crochets so I have to do my last stitch so 52 double crochets so now for the next row we are going to be doing increases for this entire row and that's the only thing that you're going to be doing different because from row number three onwards we are only going to be doing double crochets all the way down to the length you want so it's super super simple so from here you are going to chain one turn project and then we are going to be doing two double crochets into every stitch all the way down until here the very last double crochet so remember to chain one and then two double crochets into every stitch this very first one counts as the first stitch so two double crochets if you want you can return the stitch marker into the first one just so that you know that this is the first stitch and then you're going to be doing two double crochets into every stitch all the way down so increase all the way down so you're going to be having double the amount of stitches so the first row you had 52 so now for this one we are going to be having 104 stitches so now if you want you can change to a bigger hook i'm going to be using my nine millimeters from now on so all you have to do now is to chain one this is going to be the same for all the rows from now on until the length you want you can do short you can do long you can also do with a little train it's going to be up to you so I'm going to go into this first stitch following the same steps and then double crochet next stitch so we are not doing the increases anymore it's just double crochet into every stitch all the way down that's all we have to do and then when we get at the end you're going to chain one turn project and then follow the stitches to create the next row and we are going to be having 104 stitches all the way down to the length of the skirt that you want so the same amount of stitches so we are not increasing so here you can see a little bit better how it's looking you can see some waves here that's completely fine because we made the second row with increases so now from now on just double crochet back and forth following the same amount of stitches that you have here into the second row and that's all we have to do so i'm gonna go to my mom's house i'm going to take this so you'll see a few little clips of me crocheting this um, at my mom's house so <laughs> and I'm going to be doing around uh, 104 105 centimeters of rows but then when I come back I'll let you know exactly how many rows I did for my overskirt I'm pretty excited so yeah let's go
So my overskirt is now completed. I have it right here. So I've done 34 rows for the length of my skirt and it's so long. <laughs> oh well, I'm only 5'3", so it's not that long. <laughs> so I'm going to move the camera so that you can see, so you're not gonna be able to see my face. So you can see how the skirt looks. And then once you have the skirt completed, we can now move on into sewing the dress together the undergarment. I'm so excited about that. So cute. And then here we are going to lace the corset. I was thinking of adding straps here, like this picture, but I do really like it like this. So I'm going to keep it like this. And I really like it. I'm so excited everybody. So now let's go and make the dress. Oh well, I'm going to finish it, but I'm gonna show you how I made the dress step by step. So let's go. We will need a fabric of your choice. Here I have a cotton fabric that it's a little bit see-through as you can see. And then here I have my scissors. I have a zigzag scissors and also a straight scissors if I see that I need to use a straight scissors. Fabric pen, measuring tape and pins because we will need to pin the pieces together. And here, as you can see, I have a t-shirt that fits me perfectly that also you wanna make sure that when you wearing this particular top that you're going to be choosing is that it's not kind of stretching in your body you want to make sure that it fits you perfectly without you having to stretch the top to fit you so my waist size is 74 centimeters and my bust 93 with a bra on that i will definitely be wearing a bra with this one so if i divide this number it's 46 and a half and my top is actually 46 and a half <laughs> centimeters here on the bust. And also it's the same all the way down. So this is perfect. So you wanna find a top that it's perfectly to fit your actual size. All right, so exactly like this one. So go ahead and fold your top in half. And also we are going to be cutting the sleeves exactly as it is here as well with this little curve because this dress has a sleeve so we are going to be using this one to create the actual sleeves for our dress so you want to open your fabric now here i have the folded part of my fabric and the width is going that way as you can see all right so here's the width and then the length it's that way so you want to make sure that when you're cutting the top that you cut on the folded part of the fabric here, just like this. So the front of the, the top is going to be here. We have to fold the fabric so that we can cut the two pieces at the same time. So from shoulder to waist, I'm cutting 40 centimeters. So I can unfold my fabric even more. All right, this is perfect. So get your top, match the front of the top with the, the folded part of the fabric. And then you wanna make sure that you fold the sleeves. We can just fold the top part like this and we can just use this one as the guide. So you can fold it like that. And now we are going to be using our fabric pen and we are going to be tracing the top all the way around. And here you wanna make sure that you have the 40 centimeters and then you wanna leave like one or two centimeters going down if you want. So now we are going to be cutting the neckline. So I'm going to be leaving here around seven centimeters for the shoulders. And then we can just create the neckline that we want. So the back and the front, it's going to be exactly the same. And then I'm gonna go down here for the cleavage 
about 12 centimeters. So here. And then we are just going to be connecting the two points. So now we can cut the top of our dress. Make sure that you leave a little bit of seam allowance just in case we need to add more to the top. I'm going to be leaving about one centimeter, one and a half. We can cut the shoulders here at the top. So we have two pieces for the top of the dress. So now we can put this aside. And now we are going to be cutting the sleeves before we move on into the skirt because this dress is super simple. It's just top, sleeves, and the skirt. And then you just put everything together and that's it. It's super, super simple. Just to be sure that the arms here, it's going to fit around my shoulders. So what I'm going to be doing is putting the two sides together I'm going to be sewing here at the sides and also the shoulders and I'm going to try it on to see if this fits me before I do the sleeves because we are going to be using the same opening here. So here we have the top, this is the style that I'm going for. So it's slightly open here and then it goes deeper in the cleavage, as you can see. So it fits perfectly under the armpit as well, which I like. And yeah, this is what we are going for. So it fits perfectly. So now we can move on into creating the sleeves. All right, so now I'm a bit confused because I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> So I'm thinking like logically now. So we have to maintain the bottom line here nice and straight and also here like this with the fabric. So I'm going to be creating the opening here of my top for the sleeves that we have to do. So here is the finishing and here is the finishing of the opening of my sleeve. So the length is going to be 64. So you're going to be measuring from your shoulder. There is a sewing here in your shoulder when you're trying a top on. So you're going to be measuring from this sewing all the way to the length that you want. So I'm doing 64. So I'm just going to be marking this number down. And then I'm just going to be kind of creating a line here at the bottom. So now you have to choose the sizing of your bow sleeves. I'm doing mine 35 centimeters. So from here all the way to 35. So 35 is right here. Hopefully I'm recording that. It's right here, everybody. So now you have to connect the top line so we are going to just make a straight line connecting these two. So now here for the actual bow sleeves, you have two options. You can do straight from underneath the armpits all the way to the bottom. So you're going to have a different style. Or you can do a little bit skinny against your upper arm and then you can create the bow sleeves. That is going to give a different effect. So I'm going to be doing that. So I'm going to be doing a straight for about 20 centimeters. Here. And then now we are going to be connecting this line to this one. So I'm going to be doing it straight down like this. Before I cut, I'm going to be pinning this fabric together. And once you pin, you can cut it all the way around, making sure that you leave a little bit of seam allowance because we are going to have to sew all this together. So 
So I'm now going to be sewing the sleeves close. So we have to sew two together, all right? So it's going to be two and two because we have four fabrics. So we are going to be sewing at the top and also from this point all the way the bottom here as well. So now I have my sleeves here completed. I haven't done the finishing here because I'm going to do this at the end. So now you're going to get your top and you want to turn your sleeve inside out. So the right side is going to be here on the outside. Now we are going to be placing the sleeves inside the top and we are going to be matching shoulder with shoulder and armpit with armpit. And then you're just going to be matching all the way around. If you want, you can pin all the way around so it's helpful when sewing. And then we can just sew the sleeves to our top. It's funny how I don't have any experience and I'm trying to do this. It's a sign. So now I'm going to be doing the same here on the other side so that I can sew both at the same time. So here we have the sleeves and the top completed and we still have to do like the finishings around the neck and also here on the wrist. So I'm going to leave that at the end because then I can do all the finishings at the same time including the hemming as well. So from here I'm going to be leaving this aside so I can finish this later and then I'm going to be doing my skirt. So now for the skirt, I'm going to try and open the width of my fabric and I'm going to be folding it on the width and I'm going to see if I have enough fabric to do the skirt on the bias of the fabric, basically in the corner of the fabric. You can search online to, to have more info on that. And by cutting on the bias of the fabric, your skirt is going to have more movement and it's not going to be straight basically so it's going to have more of the wavy kind of effect so you can do on the bias if you have enough fabric and I'm going to be doing that because I think it's going to be perfect so maybe you can see this a little bit better so I have my top here the waist of my top here and I've measured 105 now I'm going to be folding the fabric so that I can cut the skirt and it's going to be an a-line skirt so it's going to be kind of flowy, all right? Hello, Lily. <laughs> Excuse me, Lily. Excuse me. <laughs> it's not time to play, that's my skirt. So as you can see, I've folded my fabric in half on the bias side of the fabric. And then I've just folded my top and I've added right at the top where I'm going to be cutting the waist of my skirt. And then first I'm going to be cutting the waist and then from there I'm going to be measuring with my measuring tape from waist to length 105, 106 centimeters and then I'm going to be cutting the length of my skirt and that's all you have to do and then you have to just sew the sides of the skirt and then you have to attach to the waist which is super easy and I'm going to show you that as well.
So once you are done with your skirt, we can now join the top and the skirt together. And what we have to do is to make the waist of the skirt the same size as the waist of the top. So we have to do four darts, two at the front and two at the back. So you're just going to be kind of folding it like this and you're going to be pinning it down until it's the same size as the waist of the top. So the top is on the right side, we are going to be inserting inside of the skirt. So the skirt is on the reverse as you can see. So the right side is here on the inside. You place it inside. So you're going to be placing the top inside the skirt. You're going to get the waist of the top. Where is it? Here. <laughs> and we are going to be joining all the way around with some pins, making sure that it fits perfectly around. So now go ahead and sew the top and the skirt together. And then the last thing that we have to do is do the hemming. So I'm gonna also do that already now. So I'm going to double fold the hemming and I'm just going to be sewing all the way around. I'm going to be doing the bottom of the skirt the sleeves and also the neckline. I'm going to be doing exactly the same, double fold and straight sewing, just so I have a nice finishing for my dress. And then also I'm going to zigzag stitch. If you have a overlocker, then you can just clean the edges with a zigzag stitch or the overlocker. All right, so this is the last thing that we have to do. So here we have the undergarment and it fits perfectly. As I've mentioned, it's going to be around 10 centimeters bigger than your size because this is how it's supposed to be. And here at the top, you will see on the neckline, you will see that it's quite loose and it, it's kind of falling off your shoulders. So I was going to add an elastic all the way around, but then I decided not to. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a dart by folding two little darts on the side and connecting them at the front. I'm going to show you a little bit closer, but it's going to create kind of like a little effect here at the front and I really, really liked that. So I'm going to be doing that now. So now to create the little darts that I was talking about, you're just going to be folding it like this on this side. You want to make sure that you know exactly where the middle is. So you want to touch the middle. And then we are going to be pinning this in place. And then you're going to be doing the same amount on the other side. And you want to make sure that they kind of touch here at the front. Just like this. Make sure that it's the same amount. This is good. And then pin this in place. And then you are going to be sewing this in place. Making sure that you get all the layers. So here is an overview of our undergarment, as you can see. It's exactly how I want it to look, super simple, but then when you add the overskirt with the crochet, it's going to look stunning. The dress is done and the skirt is done. Wow, I love it. I told you it was going to be quick. <laughs> 
so look at it this is my undergarment i'm not sure the name this the correct name for this but this is what i made and i made it by myself and i'm so proud of it and i'm so happy with it and we have now the costume completed i'm so excited so i've moved everything that i had here so that i could record this part for you guys so i have more space so now we have to try it on so i have my nude bra and a nude shorts underneath so i'm going to first put on my undergarment look at it i love it so sorry flowers <laughs> oh my god it's so beautiful everybody it's so beautiful look at my socks <laughs> before i put the corset on because it's going to be too warm i'm going to fix my hair and what i have in mind is just to do like a half up half down um, you can also leave your hair natural like this or curly but I was thinking of just grabbing a little bit of hair and just wrapping it and then just pinning it in place just like that this simple <laughs> we can just secure this hair in place like this very very simple and then I'm just gonna loosen a little bit of my fringe okay let's try to do the same on the other side so let's curl these front pieces this I love this side better than the other always it's always like that but that's fine so I'm going to be putting a little bit of lipstick this one is the L'Oreal Paris 636 color rich matte I'm gonna put a little bit more oh my goodness look at it I would definitely wear this at home it's so comfy so I'm going to be putting my boots on I have <laughs> brown boots <laughs> these ones are from Clark's you're not gonna see the boots so it's completely fine if you don't have brown boots or black boots you can just wear trainers so boots on now to finish this look this Halloween medieval super cute look because come on this is the cutest Halloween costume ever. Now we have to add the main piece of this costume, which is the corset and overskirt. Ah! So how are you gonna do it? Find first the reverse. <laughs> so the reverse is here. So you're going to be putting it around your waist. So a little tip, you're going to lace up the corset when it's around your waist, when you're wearing it, because if you lace the corset and you put it on, it's going to stretch and it's going to ruin the crochet. So you want to do it when it's in your body. Loving this. I'm going to tighten my corset. Do a bow here at the top. Oh my god. <gasps> Did we just do what? <gasps> I can't. This is so cute. 
Oh, I love this. So here is the outfit now completed. I wish I've done the skirt, the overskirt a little bit longer now that I see it. But it's actually fine because then the crochet is not gonna be like on the floor, which is better because then it's not gonna ruin the crochet. But we are done. Our medieval costume is completed. And I just feel so cute. <laughs> And I thought because of the skirt and the crochet would weight the corset and it would move down, but it actually stays and it's really nice. the wrap-up time <laughs> it's incredible it's exactly what I had in mind like 100% exactly what I wanted like the dress it's perfect the undergarment it's perfect the color is perfect the overskirt is exactly how I wanted my hair is exactly how I wanted to do so I'm pretty happy with how everything came out and I just love it let me know in the comments what do you think about my medieval, my take on a medieval <laughs> costume outfit? And also, if you end up making this, if you like this era, or even if you're gonna make next year, <laughs> let me know how it was for you to follow this kind of tutorial video if you end up making it. And also, don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you, if you take any pictures, because I would love to see your take on this one because it's incredible and you're going to feel like a medieval princess. <laughs> so I'm going to now end today's video because otherwise I'm going to talk with you here until tomorrow morning, definitely, because when I'm excited, I just talk, 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 talk and I cannot stop. So thank you everyone for watching today's video. If you did enjoy watching my video, the crazy me, <laughs> don't forget to leave your massive thumbs up as you always do. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to turn on the notification bell to receive notifications every time I post a new video. So thank you everyone for watching again today's video and I'll see you next time. Bye.